Hello everyone, this is Alchemisted, and welcome back to Rise of the Red Shirt. Let's see, where are we at? We have just started the uh, Klingon campaign in earnest with diplomatic orders, kicked off the plot in high style, and we are now playing hide and seek. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Let's see, you have already completed this mission. Yes, I know. Vice Admiral, this mission briefing is classified. Get off there. Starfleet Intelligence has been working on cracking the coded message sent by the Undane agent you exposed at Pajem, and we think we have something. There are several references to the Pulse and Nebula on the data. That is an area of space near the Lackey system that we don't know much about. Starfleet needs you to survey the Nebula and find out why the Undine have an interest in it. Be careful. When the Enterprise D was in the area, it reported that the composition of the clouds may screen opponents from your sensors. Like a system in the Orion sector or the Sirius sector block. We have a ways to travel there, but it'll give me enough uh, time to talk about a few things that have happened in the interim since the last episode of Rise of the Red Shirt. And uh, we have four nice rewards here. They're all useless. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that our primary. And I am speaking, of course, of the ground combat update. Season 4 has launched earlier this week. And uh, it includes with it a brand new shooter mode, which I will be showing you in earnest. Earnestly, yes. I meant it. I meant what I said. Okay, let's go ahead and equip the Borg Transwarp engine, which will get us there faster. That did that for some reason. I don't know why. Some really goof... There's a lot of, there's a lot of glitches in the game... None of them are in completely game-breaking. I know quite a few people are significantly pi significantly pissed off about some of them. Let's go ahead and transwarp to Earth Space Dock, though. That will make this go faster. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of talking about Season 4 in a separate video. Uh... All I really want to get off my chest right now is, for God's sake, cutting the cord. Something... I don't know if it's just me. I have... I don't have the best personal shield in the game, but I have something close. Let's see, where is that? Uh... P. And, uh, it's chugging because there's so much traffic. Uh, 318 maximum shield capacity. That was, uh, up into the 500s last time. Regenerates after three seconds of not taking damage. The thing about the ground combat update is they nerfed the uh, personal shields pretty severely. Like, really severely. And their big problem with that mission, uh, some of the footage in, that's in the new intro for Rise of the Retro was recorded from cutting the cord, and my god, was that an adventure to get recorded. It was painful. Uh, because that mission was essentially designed around your character being a one-man army, which is no longer the case in any way, shape, or form. So what happens is I... You're, you're on your own throughout the entire mission. You'll, you'll find out whenever we actually get to the Riemann, to the Riemann game. Uh, you're completely on your own for this mission. You can call in backup at several fixed locations... You know, it's, it's entirely scripted where you can actually call for reinforcements. Which brings up the question, if you can just call for reinforcements from your ship, why can't you just call your bridge officers to join you where you are? And that's something I really hope... That's something I think they need to do now that they've uh, changed ground combat so much and made it so much faster paced and especially made your shields, your defenses, so much weaker is they need... To send your boffs in you on that mission, and I, and I, like beforehand, it was piss easy. You could, you could destroy that mission solo. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a thing. But now, Jesus, oh, you you need your boffs. You need you need some backup. Here's another cool thing: is that the uh, displays fade out when you're not interacting with them for a while, which I can get behind. They can get annoying. Let's go ahead and switch to my Aegis engine, because I only use my Borg engine to travel between systems that are really far away from each other. And let's enter the Lackey system. Let's get this some bitch underway. 
There's bad shit going on over there. New entrance animations, too. It's all cool. Sir, we are receiving a distress call from the USS Valor. They are under attack by Gorn and their shields are failing. Captain, they can't take much more. Well, let's go to get in there and sort this shit out. Hello, Gorn. You stand no chance. Hello, Gorn. You too stand no chance. Razzle dazzle. I can go ahead and beam dilithium aboard. It hasn't even given me the objective yet. Thank you for the assist, DP. Our ship is on a mission to map the Pulsan Nebula. Unfortunately, we failed to adequately compensate for the power drain the Nebula had on our engines. We retreated from the Nebula to make repairs. That's when we stumbled upon an illegal Gorn mining operation. If you hadn't shown up when you did, Vice Admiral, we'd be sucking vacuum. Our chief engineer says there's no way we can make it back to a starbase. In fact, without new dilithium crystals, we're stuck. There are crystals in some of the larger asteroids here. That's why we headed for this location in the first place. If you could gather some crystals for us, we can make it to safety. Send us a hail if you have any questions about the nebula. We will be happy to share our data. Alright. We will sort this out. You go ahead and sit there. So yeah, you're going to be seeing this formula a lot in the game. Interact with X amount of stuff. Interact with X amount of whatever and fight whatever enemies happen to be hanging around X amount of whatever. This is a formula that the game will repeat constantly. Next! Which one's closer? Which one's closer? Which one's closer? I'm going to you first. I'm not hailing the Valor yet. I don't need to. Let's see. I'm tabbing. There's nothing there. Nothing I can see, anyways. The uh, Ui is also quite a bit more responsive. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. The hell are you doing? Knock it off. We're in your depth, Wuggelin Day. There's enough dilithium to get our warp engines restarted. After we finish preliminary repairs, we'll set course for Starbase 157. If you want to go into the Pulsa Nebula, your engines will need a boost. I recommend you visit Lackey 3. The Gorn drove out the Federation miners there and took over a decalithium processing facility. It's only fair that you take some of their crystals back. Captain, we can set full course for a Lackey 3 at your command. I command it. Hello! That doesn't usually happen. Uh, did the game just crash on me? Okay! Captain, the Decalithium Processing Facility is dead ahead. The Gorn have numerous structures in the debris field, sir. We're also picking up several fighters and frigates. They know they're in Federation territory, and they're trying to protect their ill-gotten gains. I advise we approach with caution. Sorry about that, everyone. I forgot to uh, unhide the cursor. I had had to hide it to record the various cutscenes for the uh, new intro. Oops. Shit happens. Anomalous energy reading. I want to scan it, but I know it's not going to be worth it. 
Attempt to beam up deck lithium from the Gorn refinery. Isn't it nice when the mission objectives kind of foreshadow the fact you're going to fail at whatever the objective is? At least at first. Oh yes, auto loot. Got another nice upgrade in season four. Detected. Captain, we can't get a lock on the deck of lithium. It appears the Gorn have some sort of sensor jamming device on one of the nearby asteroids. The computer indicates that the techno technology may be Klingon in origin. I'll begin scanning for any suspicious tachyon emissions. Captain, there may be people inside the jamming station. We need to destroy it to get the deck lithium, but if we beam spatial charges down, it should give anyone inside enough time to escape. Or disarm the charges. Continue. I've transmitted a warning to the jamming station, sir. The charges are prepared and we can beam them over at your command. I beg your pardon. Have a hard pang. Here, have some explosives. You call that time to let them get away? That was immediate. I'd like to talk to whoever was working that fucking fuse. I take your decalithium. I think we're done here. The decalithium crystals are doing the trick, Captain. Engine efficiency is increased by 47... 4.7, same thing. 4.7%, and we should be able to boost the impulse drive enough to deal with the effects of the nebula. Well, the four, number 47. Will Trek riders ever get tired of you? We can set course for the Paulson Nebula whenever you are ready, sir. I have the coordinates for the area of interest mentioned in the Velor's report. Warp to the Paulson Nebula. Warp to the... Okay. There was a delay there. Captain, such so as so that the amount of metallic density in this region is much higher than it would be expected for a nebula of this class. There's definitely something big here, and it might be hidden in another high-density object. We should scan all high-density objects in the vicinity. Again, same pattern. You're going to be seeing this a lot. Scan, ex uh, interact with X amount of stuff, and fight whoever happens to be near it. This was annoying before, now it is not so much, because they have no chance. And I have auto loot, which is oh so nice. So I'm gonna scan you first. No, resist. Fuck. Ooh, it auto loots the uh, anomalies. Nice. I should take this into uh, the Petran coat. Bleh. This is what happens. This is what happens when you impose a limit on caffeine on yourself. You can't speak anymore. I should take this into Petran. Pretty sure I can make a killing over there. 
looting anomalies. Scan it. How, I'm in a galaxy class starship. How fucking close do I have to be to scan it? I have sensors designed to unlock the mysteries of the universe. Why can't I scan it from farther away? Over this. And uh what the hell what the hell was this ship called? Tamarian Tamarian Frigger or whatever? Uh, when the studio model was introduced. Ah, uh, you couldn't stop me from scanning it. Now I kill you. Holy shit. Wow. He just popped. Mine! 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 Oh. Raptors. Raptors must die. Whoa, chugging. Mine! Mine! Oh, that's it. They can't do crap to me. Alright. I'd never gotten loot from a mine before. Captain, we found something. I think you'll be very interested in the results of the sensor sweep, sir. This asteroid is surrounded by gravitic mines of Klingon manufacture. What's more, there appears, there appears to be some kind of structure on the surface, and we've detected several Klingon life signs within. Judging by the high-frequency transmissions, I'd wager that the structure is some sort of listening station. I recommend we carefully punch a hole in that minefield and send an away team to the surface. <laughs> what minefield? And uh, this time I'm going down with the hazard team, which is Lima, uh, Lima Revan, 8 of 8, and Pran. Ooh, wait, I have to give 8 of 8, eight, of eight a shotgun now, that's right. Yes, now you will see it, the uh, new combat system demonstrated in earnest. In fact, I'm going to be leaving my bridge officers behind at the beam in sight uh, so I can get up close and personal with these guys and show you what this new combat system is all about. And it's not perfect. There's a, tr there's a big trade-off when you're using it. Oh... Uh. 